Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at lesson 4.4, scatter plots and lines of fit. Um, you will need just a small piece of graph paper for the very last question on your notes, but everything else can be done on your normal notebook paper. We're going to be looking for eight things today to write down, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to know is what is a scatter plot. So I've attached an example of a scatter plot right here, and it's basically whenever you compare two sets of data, um, but it's not necessarily going to show everything on a line, so it's kind of scattered, so that's why they call it a scatter plot. Um, the two data sets are going to be graphed as ordered pairs, and it, you usually can see trends in the data, so that's what we're actually going to be looking at today. So let's go ahead and pause real quick so we can write down what a scatter plot looks like. If you want to draw the picture too, you can, and then once you're done, click play so you can see what happens next. So the next question we're going to do is actually just read the scatter plot. So you have an example of the scatter plot right here. It's talking about in the in smoothies, how many how much sugar represents how many calories. So what we're going to do is take time to answer the following three questions in number two, A, B, and C. So let's go ahead and take time now to pause the video here so you can read the situation and then answer A, B, and C. All right, so for letter A, it says, how many calories are in the smoothie that contains 56 grams? So I just go over here between 54 and 58, and I get right at 270 calories. For number, or letter B, how many grams of sugar in the smoothie for 320 calories? Again, I go up to 320, look across, and it intersects with 70 grams of sugar. The last one says what happens to what tends to happen to the number of calories as the number of grams of sugar increases. What we see here, as the amount of sugar increases, the amount of calories will also increase too. So this is what this is what we would call a positive correlation. The higher you go up on the x-axis, the higher you go up on the y-axis. Okay. The next two, again, you're just going to be reading this one, except. Um, these are not going to be specific numbers on the graphs. So you're going to have, kind of have to look and estimate here. So again, let's go ahead and pause, use the graph to answer the questions, and once you're done, click play to check your work. So for number three, we're looking for 51 grams, and 51 would be right after 50. So I estimated that it would be about 260 calories. For number four, how many grams of sugar in the smoothie that contains 250? And 250 it looks right across to give us about 52 grams of sugar, okay? What we have next are just some uh, different scatter plots and correlation examples. So again, we've already seen a positive correlation. As x increases, so does y. A negative correlation would be as x increases, y would decrease. And then no correlation, meaning there's no really um, pattern that you see or there's no um, connection between the two sets of data. Let's go ahead and take time now to really quickly to pause the video here so you can write down what is a positive correlation look like, a negative correlation, and a no correlation. So make sure you draw and label the following graphs. Once you're done, click play to see what happens next. So these two, you're just going to tell me if there's a positive, negative, or no correlation. So according to the graphs that you just drew and labeled, Go ahead and figure out what is A and B. Let's go ahead and pause the video here so you can try it. And once you're done, click play. So in letter A, it talks about the age and vehicles owned. And notice that none of the points really show a um, specific pattern. So we're going to talk about, say this is no correlation. But for letter B, the temperature at coat sales at a store temperature and coat sales at a store, the lower the temperature, the higher the, the higher the coats were sold. So that would actually be a negative correlation because the graph is going down as we're seeing it. Okay. The last thing we're going to talk about is how to use a line of fit to model the data. And so this, these are some steps I would like for you to write down. The first step is pretty easy. Making a scatter plot of the data, that's just graphing your points. The next piece of information is determine whether the data can be modeled by a line. So really you just need a positive or a negative correlation here. Then once you have that line drawn, you draw the line that appears to fit the data closely. And you want to get as many points above the line as below it. So just make sure that you're kind of like drawing the line evenly in between the points and dispersing. 
and then you're going to write an equation using two points on the line. And remember we learned this in lessons um, 4.2 and 4.1. So you can use that information either slope intercept form or point slope form, y minus y1 equals m, parentheses x minus x1. Okay, so what we're going to do here is go ahead and pause the video. The only really new things we have here are steps 2, 3, and 4. Um, step 1 is pretty easy, but I would like for you to write down all the steps here. So let's go ahead and pause now, and then once you're done, click play so you can see how to graph and make your equation. Alright, so here's the table that shows weekly DVD sales, and then how the sales maybe are affected after a certain amount of weeks. What we're going to do is graph the information, and then we're going to interpret the slope and the y-intercept of the line of fit, which just means that we would need to write an equation here too. If you're not comfortable with writing the equation yet, maybe go ahead and plot your points and then click play to see if your points line up and then I can kind of explain that to you. If you feel confident doing all of the things here, go ahead and try it. I'm going to go ahead and ask you to pause the video here though so you can try those questions and then once you're done, click play so you can check your work. All right, so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and label your graph. Your weeks are on the x-axis and your DVD sales are on the y. I labeled my weeks up by ones and I labeled my DVD sales up by twos. The next thing we're going to do is plot the point. So here are all my points. And now what I would like to do is make a line of fit. And remember, you want the same amount on the top of the line as you are on the bottom of the line. So my line of fit, I'm actually do that in a different color for you. So what I did here is I tried to hit as many points as I could, but still have the same number of points that are above the line as below the line. Um, I did have two above the line and then three below the line, but that's okay. I noticed, though, that I hit, I was able to hit weeks five and week six. Okay, so that would be five comma ten and six comma eight. So here is when we did step number um, four, find two points on the line. So after I found the, the line of fit, I'm going to find two points on the line and then make my equation. So first thing I would do would find my differences in y's. So 10 minus 8 over my differences in x, 5 minus 6. That is 2 over negative 1, so my slope is negative 2. And then remember, I can use either slope-intercept form or point-slope form to find my y-intercept. I'm going to use slope-intercept form because that's easier for me. And I'm going to use 6 comma 8 to use to plug in those points. So 8 is y, m is negative 2, and 6 is x. So I'm going to solve for b here. I get negative 12 plus b is equal to 8. And then when I add 12 to both sides, b is equal to 20. So my y-intercept is 20. So y is equal to negative 2x plus 20. So when it says to interpret the slope and the y-intercept, my slope is negative, so this would be a negative correlation. And you could also say the price falls on average $2 a week. Okay, my y-intercept is 20, so DVDs start at $20. Okay, so that's all you had to do to really um, interpret your y-intercept and your slope. Okay, that was all we had for notes today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Again, if you need to go back and watch the graphing and how to find your line of fit, you're more than welcome to, um, and we'll catch you next time for our next lesson.